Hi. Now, here we've got a question based around transformations of graphs. We've got here the figure shows part of the curve with equation y equals sine of all of ax minus b, where a is greater than 0 and b is a value between naught and pi radians. And we're told that the curve cuts the x-axis at the points p, q and r. And we're given that the coordinates of p, q and r are pi over 10, 0, 3 pi over 5, 0, and 11 pi over 10, 0, respectively. And what we've got to do is find the values of those constants a and b. So if this is a question you'd like to try and you haven't done so already, just give you a few moments to pause the video, do come back when ready, and you can check your work solution with mine. OK, welcome back if you had a go. Now, whenever you get something like this, sine of ax minus b, cos ax minus b, or even tan of ax minus b, it's a very common transformation of the standard graph. In this case, sine of x. If we were to take the graph of sine x, a graph that you can see here going from 0, that value is pi, and if it crossed the x-axis about here, this would be 2 pi. If we take this graph and we stretch it, say, parallel to the x-axis, then we'll get something like this, and then we translate it to the right, you can see how it maps on to the original graph. Now what it represents then is, first of all, a stretch. A stretch of scale factor of scale factor 1 over a. 1 over a parallel to the x-axis. Now I'm giving you this without any proof. I will show you this at the end. And then it's followed by a translation, a translation to the right. And that translation is not B units, but in fact B over A units to the right. If we had a question where it was the sine of AX plus B, it would be a stretch of scale factor 1 over A, followed by a translation of B over A units to the left. And the same would apply if it was a cosine function or a tan function. We would take those base graphs of sine X, cos X, tan X respectively. So, if we're to get this, the values of A and B, what I notice is that when I stretch this, so when I compress it, it's going to bunch up. Then I slide it to the right and I get this graph here. What is happening to the period though? The period, that's the distance from here to here where it crosses the x-axis for the graph of sine x. It's a period of 2 pi, naught to 2 pi. We'll just write that in up here, that the period equals 2 pi. Now when we stretch this graph by a scale factor of 1 over a, we reduce the period. Now the period of this graph now is exactly the same as the period from p to r, because we're going to translate it to the right in a moment. Now we're told that the coordinate of p here is pi upon 10, 0. So this point here then has coordinates pi upon 10, 0. Whereas at r, this point we're told is 11 tenths pi. So we just say that's 11 tenths pi. And so the distance from p to r, its period, is going to be the difference between 11 tenths pi and pi over 10. 1 tenth taken away from 11 tenths is 10 tenths. And that's one whole one, one whole pi. So the period of our original sine wave has now reduced down to pi units. And that represents this stretch, scale factor 1 over a. So you can see it's been halved. 
So it follows from this that 1 over a must equal a half. And it follows then that a must be equal to 2. Well, there's our first answer. Now we're going to translate this graph, the red graph, to the right by pi over 10 units. And so that means that our translation factor b over a must represent pi over 10 units. So what we've got here then is that therefore b over a must equal pi over 10 units going from 0 to pi over 10. Well, we know the value of a, so from this it follows that b divided by 2 equals pi over 10. And if I multiply both sides by 2, I therefore have that b equals 2 tenths pi, or in other words, 1 fifth pi, or pi over 5. So there's my value for a, it's 2, and my value for b is a fifth pi. Now I did say that I'd show you why it, this was so. And then what we can do is we can prove this quite easily by just saying, let's suppose that f of x equals, say, sine x, our original graph. Then if I multiply the x by value a, then we've got f of ax. So I'm replacing the x in here with ax, so we end up with the graph of sine ax. Now let's suppose that I call this function here, give it a new name, let's say we call it g of x. Okay, So g of x is now the graph of sine ax. And if I replace the x with x minus b over a, we therefore have g of x minus b over a equals, and I'm just replacing the x in here with x minus b over a, then I end up with the sine of a multiplied by x minus b over a. And can you see that if I multiply this out, I'm going to get the sine of ax minus b, what we had to look at here. So when we break down our transformations, you can see that if we take our sine graph, we are multiplying the x by a. And since a is a positive value, in our case it was 2, we were looking at f of 2x, the graph of sine 2x, then what that does, it gives us a stretch of scale factor 1 over a, 1 over 2, a half. And then we take our graph, the graph of sine 2x, and we translate it to the right by a factor of b over a. b over a was b over 2, equivalent of pi over 10 units. So I hope it's given you some idea, quite a tricky question, on combining transformations of trigonometric graphs.